Greetings and salutations, listener. It is I, Eric J. Chucky, joined as always by my hetero life partner, the boy. Hey. And we are here to bring you the last Two Nerds podcast of the year of our Lord Cthulhu, 2014. Or if you follow the space calendar of star dates, 2014. That's an old school joke for you old school fans. Um, before we get started in our year in review podcast for the Two Nerds podcast, uh, if you could hit the like button, it's the little thumbs up. Presently, it is located slightly below and to the left of our video. Um, that'd be super keen. YouTube will probably change that at some point. Oh gosh, right? yeah, they love it. It's gonna be like a, a floating thumb that you have to like click and catch, and they're gonna go back to like uh, late or no, early two thousands uh, GIF. Um, like the spam. ads yeah, you would always yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Where the fuck was I? Right. Uh, favorite, subscribe, and all that shit, too, if you want to. But the likes, those thumbs up really help. If you're already subscribed, we love you. But please, hit the thumbs up button. That's what boosts our signal on YouTube. Uh, that being said, if you could also check the link in the description, um, go to the Shining Wizardo Bandcamp page. Check out Super Blizzard stuff. Um, beyond Shining Wizardo, let's get hardcore being our theme music. Uh, you can also check out all the cool-ass games he does. Joy Lancer, Puppet Kingdom. He's working on a wrestling thing. Um, he just came out with something, like, yesterday called uh, Long Live the Axe. I think I'm going to buy it. It's like a little 8-bit axe-throwy, platformery thingamagoo. I'm interested. I love thingamagoos. How about you? I'm a big fan, yeah. All right, well, he's a cool dude, and, you know, indie developers and YouTubers... We need to work together to get our shit out there. And he's our partner in crime, so we are forever going to suckle at the dick of his deeds. <laughs> okay, uh, sure. <laughs> I'm feeling for both tonight. Hold on. I forgot to do this before we started. Delicious. I got my grape drink and my cavassier. Let's begin. <laughs> All right, uh, listener. We were going to do uh, a year in review. Now, oftentimes with stuff like this, you'll run into like a top ten list or whatever, but that's not really what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be talking about uh, basically the entirety of the year 2014 as it comes to us. The good jumping off point is our previous podcast talking about stuff that has developed in them, stuff that has changed or has become new and different since the podcast happened. Or stickier. Uh, also that, you weirdo. <laughs> But uh, one new thing that happened was earlier today I beat Dragon Age Inquisition. I still haven't. No spoilers, guys. But, you spoiled it, you assholes! But uh, I assume they just flew to the comments to comment on Dragon Age spoilers. Don't make me a liar. <laughs> it was really good. Just uh, I know that's something we hadn't covered in the podcast before. The ending, really, really good. As good as the rest of the game. But... I uh, was looking at our previous podcast here. We have our uh, YouTube page open looking at the previous works. Look at that. Seven months ago, we started this bitch with WWE Extreme Rules 2014, and that remains the best pay-per-view of the year, doesn't it? Uh, I don't know. Like, there um, was also a, a pretty good one. Uh, I think it was... It wasn't, sur it wasn't TLC. Maybe SummerSlam. SummerSlam, SummerSlam was, was good. Yeah. I don't know. My... Wrestling has uh, has been so sour for me in the last month that I I don't know that I have perspective on it anymore. You know, there's something that's changed over the last year is wrestling. We really started off strong. Yeah, the year started off big, you know, big hopes, big dreams. WWE Network launched. We got to watch pay-per-views on the regular for, uh, well, the first time in my life. I, you, sir? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, we've caught basically every pay-per-view since then. And uh, it turns out that might not have been the best call. <laughs> <laughs> I think I already mentioned it, but I was so right about... Well, I made a good call about Mortal Kombat. Uh, the new Mortal Kombat game coming out, uh, I said in our previous podcast about... Um, fighting games? Yeah, fighting games podcast. Um, I mentioned that uh, it would be cool if they had a Mortal Kombat where you could kind of select the fighting style going into it. Because I never really liked the weapons they gave Scorpion, for example. But I really liked... His fighting style. Um, and I didn't like that his specials kind of changed to accommodate that. Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing, the new Mortal Kombat. When you pick Scorpion, you can pick Scorpion doing this shit, Scorpion doing that shit. 
So oh, that yeah. yeah, that came to fruition. Uh, we got Black Panther movie confirmed. I believe yes. Wonder Woman movie as well. Yeah, and then we got Luke Cage and All Iron sorts of Fist awesome stuff. Netflix series and uh, eventual Defenders team up, and that's going to be badass. So superhero movies in general, all the information we have is Been looking positive. strong. We're I think we're confirmed for a Wonder Woman movie at this point. Yeah, I think so. We got Doctor Strange coming out with Bingle Darn Slippy Deck. <laughs> I still don't get that meme. Uh, he's a really good actor, and he'll do very well in the role. Uh, I, that's, that's not anything like disparaging him. It's just that he's got that goofy-ass name. <laughs> I can't wait until it comes out that that's not his real name, and his real name is like Brian Smith. <laughs> and he decided to make something more interesting. <laughs> well, wouldn't you? League. Hey, uh, fun League news happened very recently with the Snowdown Showdown, uh, the Winter Event. Legend of the Burrow King is probably the most fun I've had playing League since Earth. Yeah, it's 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 a fun it's game a mode. fun mode. I haven't been playing as much lately because I've had other shit to do, but it is a fun game mode. Maybe. Welcome back to the Two Nerds Podcast. You experienced no real interrupt in time, but a car pulled up in front of our house, and it was a mystery car. So we engaged in, uh, fittingly enough, Sherlock Holmesy and mystery solving. Mystery solve. Um, so now back to our regularly scheduled programming. But the other Tuners podcasts we did, uh, not a lot has changed, really. League of Legends coming and going. Boy, more into Pokemon now than he used to be. Scooby-Doo, still good. WWE, not so much. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Still love role-playing, we still love video games, and we still love you, Ultimo Dragon. So much. You truly are the thing that lights up our day. So, let's talk about some of the other stuff that we did this year. Yeah, some of the stuff that's not directly related to the podcast, but in that we are talking about it on a podcast, becomes directly related to the podcast. That's the magic of, of our medium. I would say, still movie of the year, Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, yeah, hands down. I mean, we hands never... fucking down. We never got the chance to go see The Hobbit. And obviously, we didn't watch anything like, I don't know, The Tree of Life or whatever crap like that came out this year. But no, uh, I don't care. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm sure The, I'm sure the Hobbit was good. Do you think it'll be in theaters long enough for us to see it next week? Maybe. Maybe. Well, we might do a podcast on it eventually. It's not a big deal. Uh, Probably. But I'm sure it was good. Two weeks. The other two were pretty good, but, yeah, but I no fucking chance it unseats Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. No chance. Amazing. I, I, did, I, I can't think of the movie in a mat. I started off so strong, listener. That car pulled up, and I just can't talk no more. I can't think of the, a movie in the last ten years. No, that's too far. In the last eight years that I've watched multiple times, like, I I even in... The intentionally. Same, intentionally, yeah. Like, Avengers has been on a bunch, and I've sat through it. Um, but it's not like I was like, fuck yeah, let's watch Avengers. I know I've seen Captain America a couple times because I was showing people, same with Thor. Um, but that was spread out over, like, two years, maybe even three. But, like, Guardians of the Galaxy, we've seen it three times already. Uh, yeah. Twice and, in the theaters and once at home. Yeah, and to be honest with you, um, a part of me has has pulled off watching movies for the remainder of the year because uh, the last movie I watched this year was Guardians of the Galaxy, and I don't know that I want that. I, I want that to be the case. I think <laughs> I want the last movie in my list to be Drax's happy smiling face. Don't even want to go with uh, Batman. We're gonna watch Batman Two, Ooh. Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, no, maybe I could get. It, 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 I played this city like a hop from hell. I love that line. <laughs> that movie. Oh, uh, <laughs> all right. I've said this before in the podcast. The first Batman movie, Michael Keaton, doesn't hold up very well. I'm pretty sure the second one's not going to hold up any better. <laughs> no, it's it's like halfway between the first one and the second one. Like he's still he's more Batmany, like traditionally speaking. But that movie's also fucked up and weird in the first place. <laughs> Here's that weird sequence where Catwoman destroys an apartment store for no discernible reason. Catwoman was like the the worst part of that film. Um, but just as a quick movie aside here, because we both have our lists of movies we saw. Hell this year. yeah! Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy was definitely a movie of the year. I, I, I can't dispute that. What's uh, what's another standout for you? Another movie that you saw this just year? Just that I saw, or that came out this year? Uh just that you saw. Oh, okay. Well, because oh, I don't remember the. The pre the premiere dates of a bunch of the shit on this list. So I mean Godzilla, um, Cat Two. This cat, I swear, he just keeps like touching me. <laughs> he thinks I have a lap, but I don't, listener. I don't have a lap at all. Some other movies. Uh, 
movies that bear commenting on for the year, just because I feel like talking about it. World War Z was awful. That was shit. That uh, movie fucked up a zombie movie and an action movie and having a Brad Pitt in your movie at the same time. I, I mean, that's a fucking, that's an like, accomplishment. Yeah, you have to work really hard to fuck that up. I went into that, I wasn't even like trying to be like, okay, this is going to be exactly like the books. I knew it wasn't. And I was okay with that because I like zombie movies, period. This was not a fucking zombie movie. This was a disaster movie at best. Yeah. And it was a shitty disaster movie. Roland Emmerich would look at this and go, yes, that's bad. You're doing it all wrong. <laughs> uh, American Hustle came out last year. I only saw it this year. American Hustle was really, really damn good. Oh, uh, Wolf of Wall Street's coming to Netflix. We need to watch that shit. Yeah, we, I'm gonna. Uh, the bunch of the other stuff that I watched this year that is, you know, really, really memory driving is movies that I already know I like, like the National Treasure movies, uh, shitty movies with Jason Statham in them. Um, I tell you what, I watched one movie that was fucking amazing. Uh, Zombie Hunter came out in 2013. Uh, it should still be on Netflix. I don't think it's part of the purge this month. Um, it is awful. It Its script reads like bad fan fiction. And it's poorly acted. But it's amazing. I mean, <laughs> so I guess... Danny Trejo's in it? Well, no, like, I mean, Danny Trejo helps. A lot. But, like, I guess it was kickstarted because I couldn't figure out the entire time I'm watching this movie. First of all, they have, like, really actually pretty gorgeous special effects. Both digital and, like, practical. Some of the monster special effects weren't amazing, but still pretty good. So I'm trying to figure out where this fucking shit script got funding. It was kickstarted. <laughs> so it was funded by people who hadn't actually seen the yeah. script. Kickstarter's an amazing engine for buying in ignorance, everyone. Well, whatever. I mean, sometimes you make potato salad, and sometimes you make this fucking movie, and you know what? I'd Both rather watch fine. the fucking movie. Nothing against the guy making the potato salad, just, I don't really like potato salad. Yeah. But this fucking movie, uh, if you got an hour, I think, maybe, to kill, check it out. It was fucking great. 12 Angry Men, watch that too. I recommend that to everybody. Everybody ever. Like, seriously. Alright, let's you get real talk for a second. Sure. Let's get real talk. I'm going to drop it low. I'm going to drive it low because it's real talk. Um, there's a lot of fucked up shit going on in the world today. And a lot of the problems are people perpetuating fucked up shit on both sides of any fight. And I think it's because we get really into arguing and refusing to see another person's point of view. Twelve Angry Men, I read the play and I saw the movie when I was in high school. And it really gave me a lot of perspective into how to treat other people, especially when you disagree with them. Um, it is going off of Netflix January fucking 1st. So by the time you are even able to listen to it, this podcast that is, it might be gone. Um, but if you can catch it before then, it's an hour and a half long. If not... I'm sure there's a copy you can Yeah, go to your local video store. Uh, fucking, it's old as fuck. Pirate it. I don't care. Watch it, because it's important. It is a good-ass movie, too, besides that. Yeah. Uh, another standout, like, it was a movie that came out last year that I didn't see until this year, and was su not surprised by, because the person who recommended it to me was someone whose opinions on these exact sort of movies I trust pretty implicitly. But it was pain and gain. Uh, Mark Wahlberg and the Rock movie. It was it was really fucking good. Um, it wasn't exactly the most happy fun time movie ever. It wasn't a lighthearted romp, we'll say, but it was really, really good. I watched uh, Big Trouble in Little China for the first time. I thought I'd seen it before when I was a kid. Turns out, no. And it was really, really bad until it got good, and then it was incredible. <laughs> Which is pretty well the consensus from every human who's ever seen that movie. And, and, like, now that I think back on it, there are parts in the beginning that I thought were crap that were just secretly incredible. Because <laughs> you weren't there. You weren't... I wasn't enough. I wasn't invested enough. Exactly. Um, um, all as, right. as far as cinema goes, it's been pretty good, I think. Pretty good year. Here's a sad one, folks. And this is this is a movie that I'm glad exists. I fully love that, it's, that, it's, that it exists because its existence is a testament to the power of recovery and to one man getting his life together. And I, I respect this movie and I watched it only 
because I figured it would not be exactly up my alley, but I only watched it because I was proud of of the guy responsible for making it. Uh, Jay and Silent Bob's super groovy cartoon movie was produced by Jason Mewes after he got clean this most recent time, and it's the big project that he's been using to help keep himself clean. I was super proud of Jay, because Jay, if you listen to him talk for any length of time, is a very sincere, very nice guy with a lot of troubles. I watched this movie, and this is coming from someone who I like pretty much everything Kevin Smith's ever done. I love all of the Jersey Trilogy. I liked Jersey Girl, for crap's sake. I swear, I did like that movie. It was a better beat. Um, I, I've loved everything that he's ever done that I've seen. This movie's fucking awful. <laughs> this movie is bad. It is puerile and not funny and too juvenile, even for me. And, and you know, just to, to give you some frame of reference here, listener, I'm sure we've mentioned something like this before. In fact, I believe we have on the podcast. But hey, this might be your first podcast. Every podcast could be someone's first. Um, there is a time and a place for puerile humor. But you need to be really good at it. And it needs to be in the right time and the right place. And that right time and right place might occur a lot. To be perfectly fucking fair, I like Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. I thought that was a funny movie. Maybe it goes too far a couple of times, but I thought it was a funny movie. I thought... I, I honestly did not think that movie went too far. I think that the, there are a couple sequences that I hear that about, like the Diedrich Bader sequence. That one actually gets a little flack. Why? It was hilarious. Because it's it's some dark shit they come across. Uh, I mean, I guess. I still use that, uh, <laughs> that thank you, what a lovely tea party. You say, ooh, what a lovely tea party. <laughs> uh, but... Diedrich Bader's amazing. And that was all him. Really? That's that was, fucking amazing. That I love Diedrich Bader. That was all his shit. Um, but this movie is, uh, like, I'm, I watched it. I'm glad I watched it. And if Jay comes out with another animated movie, I will watch that shit, too. But this was bad. Like, real talk, really, really bad. One of the worst movies I've seen this year. Yeah, what do you think was the worst movie you saw this year? Ooh, that is a toughie. Um, I don't think it was that. Actually, I'm pretty sure I know it was. Give me a second, I gotta find it. Uh, I could be a douchebag and say Annie, but Annie was good, it's just not my cup of tea. Yeah. Oh, mmm, that is a tough one. Okay. You have you have something in mind, like right off the bat? Well, okay, so I've got like th- All right. three here that were First just... question, first question, am I allowed to include documentaries? Well, that's that's what I'm looking at, and I wanted to preface that. There is one here that was called, like, Small House. Or no, no, yeah, it's the same fucking thing yeah, I was going to think of. That was All right, worst shit. documentary of the year was, I think we were agreed here, Tiny. A story about living small. It's about people who make tiny houses. Google it, it's a thing. It will save you so much time in your life if you just fucking Google it. All right, but let me, let, me, let me explain the problem here. It's not that there are people who want to live in a tiny house. No, that's fucking that's cool. That's fine. You want to conserve energy and Whatever, shit. that's fucking cool. You want to live it. in your own little baby space. That's fine. It's neat. But, like, this oh. documentary was the most going nowhere, doing nothing. Like, if I documented us moving, if I filmed that and then, like, edited it together and it was like, Journey... One family's trip, four blocks away. That, you know what? That would have more going on. Yeah, because we're funny motherfuckers anyway. These people were just boring as shit. And, I mean, this was a nothing fucking documentary. And this, and the worst, I think the worst part of it, the part that really hammered in home how little was happening, was how up its own ass this movie oh, was. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, just completely, it had made an Ouroboros. Um, World War Z, we mentioned, was just awful. Yeah, but its biggest sin was being fucking boring. I don't know that that's enough. Yeah, I don't know that it's enough either. Um, other than that... There are two. One was a movie I watched um, when I was staying at my family's house. Just we happened to grab it off the movie rental shelf. It's called Fingerprints. It's a horror movie. Holy shit, was it bad. Like, it was a combination of bad acting, bad writing, uh, bad sc- a bad script, uh, in terms of not just writing, but, like, stage direction. Uh, <laughs> a terrible premise. And just being boring. Like, it was the fucking... 
quattrofecta. It was ridiculous. It was terrible. But there was another movie I saw that was executed very well, and at the same time may have been something that I had less fun watching, because Fingerprints was accidentally awful. It was fun for me to make fun of. This one, Killing Them Softly, was a Brad Pitt movie from 2012. He played a mob hitman. It was the oh, you were telling most me about this. centrally preachy, unfriendly, unhappy, generally fucking miserable piece of shit I've watched. It was executed well. They got their point across uh, ridiculously and maliciously. They, they, like a fucking Looney Tunes cartoon, dropped an anvil on your head every five minutes of the thing. They were trying to hammer home as hard as possible. But it's just, it was, it was generally an exercise in being preached at by someone who hates both you and themselves. For, I think it was 90 minutes. Did we watch Zeitgeist this year? No, that was last year. Okay. <laughs> last year was Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist would have been the top of oh, for, for worst fuck. documentary. Yeah. Well, documentary. I don't yeah. know if I can actually say Propaganda that. film. Yeah. Um, but God, yeah, no, we'll I think... We'll cover that some other time, maybe. I think, I think in the end of the day, because it may, it's, the one that, it's the only one on this list that really pissed me off, Killing Them Softly was probably the worst movie I've seen this year. Now, okay, uh, worst movie I've seen this year, even worse than World War Z, um, was the 1980 Chuck Norris film The Octagon, uh, which was only saved by two things. One, um, the bad guy's second in command, the dragon, was totally Gilgamesh from Final Fantasy. Excellent. Not, not Gilgamesh, you know, the, the legendary warrior. Gilgamesh from Final Fantasy, look him up. Um, and Chuck Norris. Specifically his line... My god. Ninja. <laughs> Which occurs like in the first 20 minutes of the movie. It was just boring as sin. I mean, it was decent, but it was just absolutely boring. The movie I saw this year that pissed me off the most was Frozen. And I'm going to go into that soon on, on the other show on this channel that has yet to debut. As to why... This movie pisses me off and continues to piss me off. I got in a Twitter fight that accidentally involved Todd in the Shadows as a third wheel. I'm still very sorry about that, Todd. Um, because he's listening. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm so fucking pissed off at this movie. But, uh, yeah, as, as far as being bad, I'd say World War Z, the Octagon. Uh, they were, but they were just boring, tiny house. Fucking. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I still gotta go with Killing Them Softly. It's the only movie on this list that just outright pissed me off. Frozen pissed me off. Um, well, now that we've descended into the bad zone, we've talked about the best movies we saw this year, the worst movies we saw this year. What about games? What about games? Um, best games of the year, Dragon Age Inquisition, obviously. Yeah, uh, oh, fuck it. Yeah. Uh, I'm reminded here, we will be doing a podcast on, on the second half of Dragon Age uh, with Brandy. Because she'd kill us if we didn't after I beat it. So maybe next week. Uh, I'm really planning on beating it within the next couple days. Now that I have, you yeah, have to worry it's, about it. It's a lot easier for me to do it. Um, Playing with me in the room. Uh, I haven't played Shovel Knight yet. I bought it last night on Steam sale. I just haven't played it yet, so I can't I can't say. But other than that... Five Everything Nights looks really Freddy's. fun with that game. Five Nights at Freddy's, is, is, I think it, it dominated. I mean, it took over a small quadrant of the internet. Because it was really good. Yeah, I finally beat it um, like a pussy, but I still beat it. Uh, and, and yeah, I got the second one because I hate myself. So, And I love <laughs> Scott Coffin. Look, I, I, I bitch about a lot of things religious-wise. Um, but this guy, he's a good person, a good soul. And you should support him because... And he's good at making fucking freaky shit. Because he's good at making freaky shit. And he doesn't have to resort to, like, you know... It's that Alfred Hitchcock mentality. You don't actually have to see the murder to be horrified. You know, it doesn't have to be blood and guts to be scary. These are giant animatronics. It's the implication that's the fucking horrifying. It's implication and Uncanny Valley combined into an awful, awful slurry. Yeah, and I love it. I will drink that slurry... Even though it makes me poop, I don't know where this metaphor's going. That's fine. <laughs> um, um, to be to be honest with you, I, I didn't play a whole wealth of new video games this year. Yeah, I mean, like I, I can look at my list of Pokemon. Um, yeah, uh, I played fucking what the fuck is the name of that game? 
Smash. Smash was Smash is Smash always was fun. Good, yeah. Smash um, is and was always uh, really fun. This. Oh yeah, Charlie, Charlie Murder. Murder. I came out last year, but it was still a lot of fun. I think Xbox Live Games with Gold has been a fucking godsend. We got Charlie Murder. We got that fucking Super Time Force on the Xbox One. Uh, fucking Volgar the Viking. I haven't played it yet, but I want to. It's like an old Sega Genesis style fucking absolutely difficult game. Uh, side scroller, of course. Um, fucking, we got Hitman. We got, uh, Saints Row 3. Um, it, Street Fighter 4. This has been a fucking investment. And it's just for continuing to have gold. And, uh, to be honest, it's super worth because it's been really fun and I've had a lot of good experiences. You know what it reminds me about? It reminds, uh, reminds me of, reminds me of, not about nice. Uh, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of back when we first got Gamefly. Way yeah, back when it worked. <laughs> Alright, Gamefly is a, is a good excellent service in theory. The problem is that it, they once went four months without sending me a game. So I stopped that service. But here's the thing. I mean, like, I I like Gamefly in theory, but because I don't want all the latest, newest, coolest games ever. Like, I don't give a shit about Assassin's Creed. I don't give a shit about Call of Duty or like, the other one. <laughs> Madden. No, I, the other war game. It's like Call of Duty and then there's another one. Yeah, whatever. More. Whatever. I don't care about it. Um, like, I'm not the primary audience for that. I'm looking for, like, weird, obscure shit. Like, a Mega Man game that came out on the, the PS... Vita? Is that what it's called? Sure. The PSP? PSP, that's it. The Vita's what wow, it's called. you're just, that. like, nothing for words tonight. Ah, right? man. Fucking... Oh, I just couldn't remember because no one... It's not a PSP anymore. It's a PS Vita now. But the old one. Uh, that's the kind of stuff I was looking for. I, I play. I did play Sonic Generations. That was fun. Like, it had all the best parts of the... The old Sonic and the new Sonic wasn't terrible. So, um, Tomodachi Life, I played that too. But uh, yeah, Gamefly wasn't. Uh... They, but they had they were responsible for a lot of stuff. Uh, Gamefly is the reason I like Mass Effect yep. because I got it on a whim. Fact. Uh, and then forgot to eat. I believe I've told that story in the podcast. Before. Yes. Yeah. No, Games with Gold reminds me of that. It reminds me of. The wonderful exploration without having to drop $60 on a new game. That yeah. is, that was Gamefly. And it takes about as long for you to get the game as anything. But you get to keep them forever. Yep. That's a nice thing. Um, played a lot of independent games this year. I'm really getting into independent gaming in general. Um, I love it in theory. I mean, I've always been into... People doing their own shit. Most of the music I listen to. Music! There's something we can talk about. Good music that came out this year. Two Star Bomb albums, right? Two Star Bomb albums. Um, both of which were very good. Yeah. I prefer the first one a little, but both of which were very good. Mega's Red album came out. Oh, dude. All right. Yeah, Blue came out last year, right? Last year, two years ago. Something like that. A while. 2002. <laughs> Red came out this year. Red is the... Fulfillment of the promise that history repeating was made to me. Yeah, I mean it. That was a great album, and like at first when I listened to it, I was like, I don't know, it's all right. But that's like most Mega's music; it grows on you the more you listen. Oh man, and it just like and I, them songs. I, the the inherent joke is yeah, like Stockholm Syndrome, but no, no, it's just that those songs are very deep. There's nuance in them. There's a lot of intricate character stuff that only becomes apparent when you've listened to the song enough, not just to know the, not just to know the lyrics, but to understand the implications of the lyrics. I'm and sorry, Spaz has something to say about the Megas. Go ahead, Spaz. Oh, I guess she's finished. Carry on. It's one of those nights, man. <laughs> this podcast's all over the place anyway. People are still on the holiday. If you're listening to this listener, I love you. Yeah. Um, but... I would not be surprised or insulted if you're not. <laughs> Same, to be honest. This is one of those rambly podcasts that nobody listens to. Oh, you um, know, when I listen to podcasts, this is what I kind of like. I like hearing people shoot the shit, you know, talk yeah. about whatever. It's nice. Um, But in terms of other new music that came out this year... Kanye's new album was last year. Yeah. I'm almost positive. Because I remember bumping it when I was working at that other place. I 
try, I'm trying to remember like anything. There wasn't remember. a lot like in mainstream music that came out this year. And I need to point this out. I need to say this out loud, listener, for you and for the internet and for myself. My music tastes have not calcified. I'm not the kind of I'm not the person who's like, man, everything was better back when I was most emotionally vulnerable to it. That's I forget where I stole that joke from. I actively avoid that joke. <laughs> I I honestly think I, I it probably was Family Guy, but I don't remember where I. No, I think it was Cracked. Maybe. Man, cracked. fucking, there's something that went downhill this year. Was yeah, Cracked? Yeah, Cracked went way the fuck downhill this year. It went from being funny to funny. not funny. Yeah. We don't need to go into any detail than that. It went from being funny to not fucking funny anymore. Well, I, without naming any names or anything like that, and I think this is a symptomatic problem with almost all of their writers, almost all of their writers began pushing their individual agendas. Whether that be something large and sweeping and maybe even really fucking important, because I know there are a lot of times I went to read an article and I was like, I agree with you, but back the fuck off. Like, I already agree with you. Can you please make dick jokes? Yeah. Um, or, or somebody's small agenda. Again, I'm not going to name any names, but there is one writer in particular who um, <laughs> yeah. every single fucking article he writes is like, I met a guy on the bus this morning and he was rude, so I'm going to write an entire cracked article about people like that having small dicks. And I, I just, it's like, why? And everything on that site became that, except for like the super helpful... Um, this is stuff you read in the news this week that was absolute bullshit, but by then they'd gone too far for me. I was just like, crack, get my life. They just, they went from being funny to not fucking funny anymore. Comedy ceased being the purpose, and that's what I went there for. But, um, yeah, no, it was probably cracked, uh, but the the joke, wherever I stole it from, I cannot, I can I honestly cannot remember, was... The guy who says, music was better, when music was at its best when I was the most emotionally vulnerable to music. Meaning, when I was young and impressionable, those mu- the, that those songs made an impression on me, and now I think everything else is crap because I'm old, cynical, and the same exact quality of music doesn't work anymore. Oh, you know, there was some good stuff this year, One I'm, Republic. That's nice. <laughs> I was like, I'm in the middle of a fucking sentence. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were done. No, please, go on. (laughs) (laughs) I was waiting for you to be done, and I was like, he's finished his thought, and now we can have a mommy and daddy fight on the podcast. (laughs) It's okay, Ultimo Dragon, we still love you. You'll get to see the boy every other weekend. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, I strive not to be that guy. Same here. So, even when I don't have a lot of new music that I am super into that came out in a given year, and I don't think I do this year, it's just that I, there's nothing that's stuck. I, there's a bunch of stuff I liked, um, fucking All About That Bass. I love that song. That's a good song. There's been a lot of really good singles, but I can't think of a full album that came out that I was even excited for in the first place, but looking back, I was like, oh man, that was amazing. Like, when... When Lady Gaga's album first dropped, the one where she was a motorcycle on the cover, um, I I didn't really like that album when I first heard it, but the more I listened to it, the more I was like, this is really good. Um, I don't think her new album dropped this year, did it? I honestly don't know. Um, Because her new album's fucking amazing. Art Pop, is that what it's called? Yeah. I don't think, I think it was last year. Yeah, I think it might have been. Uh, But let's see, what was... What's the number one? Number one is Happy by Pharrell Williams. That's a good song. Haven't I think actually that came heard out it. last year. Swear to God? Yeah, man. you have. No, I've heard Tacky. Really? You haven't heard it? Oh, wow, that's weird. <laughs> I've heard hey, there's a good album that came out this year. Weird Al's new album. I've heard the Weird Al cover version. Weird Al's album is damn good. Yeah, Has not missed a step. That was solid. But I've heard Tacky. Have not heard that. I mean, I've heard the, the one hook line, but I haven't heard the rest of the song. Well, you heard yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that really matters? Yeah, that's really good. Uh, let's see here. Uh, none of that. Not a Vici song, Hey Brother. That's not bad. I like that song. I uh, fucking, I'm, I'm, I'm scrolling down this list until I find something that I've heard. I'm sure you heard some of these, but you don't know what they are. Or I've heard them, but didn't, they didn't sink in. Yeah. I mean, it's been a really, I don't know, and this is top 40, so it's not like it's... Even the stuff that I that we tend to listen to, but there I love really top forty stuff. Top forty stuff, anyway. Yeah, it's just not something. I it's usually. been a year. It for doesn't singles. make. We'll put it like this: nothing this year has made it onto my phone. 
besides that's the a good mega's way to put it. new album. Yeah, besides the the indie video game stuff with us too. Yep. Um Yeah, yeah, it's been a slow year 2014. Um musically at least. Musically. The new D&D came out. Uh what we've experienced with that's been pretty good. You've experienced that. I still haven't gotten to play it. Well, I'm sorry, but I have to be here making this podcast for the listener. <laughs> uh, I'm a little salty about that, listener. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> I swear, if we argue again, I am changing the name of this podcast from 2014 Year of Review to Mommy and Daddy are Fighting the Two Nerds <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> um. <laughs> Oh, man. Ah, oh, the best. Okay, so, you know, let's give the listener a little look into our lives here. Um, you know, we're kind of scratching for movies. We're looking at pre, pre-written pre lists here. Uh, what is it you do in a given week, a given month? I mean, what are, what is capturing your attention? What had captured your attention in 2014? Clicker Heroes, I remember that. That was that was for about the, a month. Yeah, for like a solid month. That was amazing. It was. Uh, it's a very fun game. Uh, it's free, com. I'm sort of over it now, but it's it's a game that ages only so well. Not but really my bag. It will it will divert you for like a solid month if you're the kind of person who can be diverted by it. We'll put it like that. Oh, uh, something that I only started watching this year at the insistence of the internet. Young Justice. Uh, Alright, this is going to be an awful pun, but I have to say it this way because it's accurate. That show getting canceled was a fucking injustice. That was really good. I wanted to be really obnoxious and be like, because that's the name of the show, but I didn't want to interrupt you again because then I'd be fulfilling my own prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was really very good. The first season was pretty impeccable. Second season has been pretty good, but it's not on Netflix, so I have to like find it. Because it's not even on DVD, I don't think. And that can be difficult sometimes. Hey, so it's better than uh, uh, Batman Spider-Man? What was the name of that movie? Show? <laughs> Batman Spider-Man. Batman Spider-Man. He means Batman Beyond. Is that, was that what it was called? Yeah. With Jason Derulo? Or <laughs> whatever his name was. Terry McGinnis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike Quackenbush. <laughs> <laughs> Batman Beyond was an amazing idea. That they all right. It was that or uh, fucking they make Batman a teenager. Yeah, like that's regular dumb Batman. Too. Yeah, Bruce Tim was given a fucking choice. Okay, he went with the option that doesn't that doesn't make Bruce Wayne a fucking teenager. All right, suck it up and deal. No, I you know I I don't mind. I'm not mad that it exists. I just didn't care for it. That's and I think that's about that's that's as strong as I feel about. It. I just did not care for it. It was a perfectly acceptable show when it came out. Um, sure, I'm willing to believe that. And it's a it's a fun little romp through uh, something I had watched previously many years ago for me. It, was, it wasn't bad, but yeah, no, Young Justice way better. Okay, cool. Young Justice is Justice League class. Yeah, I liked I liked uh, the Super Friends, you know, two thousands edition. <laughs> fun fact, uh, listener. For the longest time, I could not remember the name of the Justice League because I watched so much Super Friends when I was a kid. So every time I wanted to talk about it, I'd like skirt the issue. Or there'd be this long ass pause before I went, the Justice League. <laughs> because and he, you know. he inherently wants to call it the Super Friends. Well, because that's what they are. They're the Super Friends. And he's aware that that's a terrible fucking insult. <laughs> <laughs> but they're best friends. No, they're always. super. No, always. what? Batman is only super in that he is a superhero. Yeah, he's super detective-y. He's a super ninja. He's a regular ninja. He's super sexy. Well, now you've gone too far. <laughs> Not far enough. Um, gosh. But, yeah, no, I, I, I really liked Young Justice. It was good. Um, it got canceled way before its time. For bullshit reasons, if I recall. Oh, yeah, for super bullshit reasons, if memory serves. Um, let's see. I've been into stuff. Bob's Burgers, but that happened a couple years ago. Yep. I showed you it, and you were like, this is terrible. Wait, no, it's good, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> that, that first episode, man, they give you about 15 minutes awful, and then it becomes true. You know what we need to get into? Fucking Gravity Falls? Fuck yeah. I'm into it, and I've never even seen an episode of the show. 
<laughs> Put that shit somewhere I can stream it, man. I ain't got time to be trying to find kids programming on DVR and shit. Okay? Yeah, I'm sorry, man, but that's not that's not my bag. Put it on like Netflix or something where I can fucking press a button and make it happen, and I will watch your shit. There's people who shit I don't even find it entertaining that I watch because I can press a button and make it happen. I was gonna name names, but that would be gosh rude. Yeah, super rude. <laughs> super rude. Um, I watch a lot of internet review stuff. Um, I really like Lynn Cara's latest storyline this last year. That was fun. Halloween was good. I watch a lot of internet review stuff. I'm months behind on it. I, you know what the funny thing is? I cannot fucking remember. I, I think it's because there's not really an average day for me. You asked what my average day is. Well, I, that's why I said week. Yeah, you know, what my average week is. There isn't really. It depends. It kind of. You live changes. every day extraordinary. No, I live every day. I gave that to ordinary. you. Fuck! I gave that to him, listener. I let him. I let his ego have a whole big plate of hat dags just then, and he was like, "No, thank you, sir." I am full. I I have no pride. <laughs> I, I live. Every, well, it's 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 inaccurate. I live every day to the absurd extremes of modernity and ordinariness. <laughs> It's just what I'm doing on a given day kind of varies. In the last month or so, it's been basically uh, Dragon Age Inquisition. Oh, is Dragon Age Inquisition taken? I don't know, I'll watch a video or something. Yeah, that's like... To the point that I, I've made like nine characters in that game that I got like four steps into the game and went, nah, I hate this one, and went back and made a new one. <laughs> Your alt-itis follows you everywhere. Nah, it's not alt-itis, fuck you. It totally is, It has bro. nothing to... No, no. My alt-itis I'll give you in WoW, Okay. Because there's all sorts of different things I want to explore in WoW. And there's different things I want to explore in Dragon Age, but I'm not in a hurry. It was because events occurred within Dragon Age that made it so the only in-character thing my elf would do, the character who is my main playthrough of that game, would be to go fucking finish the game now. And that was before you had finished the game. So if I were to do that shit in your presence, I would be the dick. <laughs> Now, my previous playthrough had become somewhat soured between my growing distaste for Sarah and the fact that my <laughs> character is kind of lame yeah. as a person, not in combat. I really like the combat stuff, but um, I don't really like her as a character in general. Um, and the one before that was hindered because you guys pointed out he looked like my dad, so I didn't want to romance anyone anymore. And... I mean, I'd just do the Scout Harding thing, but that's what I was going to do on a different playthrough I had set up, so... I figured out what I'm going to do, though. Apparently, but he already, is, uh... The problem is that <coughs> he already has a different playthrough set up, ready to go. That, I'm sorry, sir, your old itis follows you everywhere. Well, you know, not all of us can be, you know, the guy who is the the head of the Thieves Guild and the head of the Fighters Guild and the I head of that. the Mages Guild. I got like four characters in Skyrim. Yeah. I have Altitus there. Uh, see, the difference between us is I own that shit. When I have Altitus, I, I own that shit. I wear it like a badge of pride because it's true. And none, and you should not shrink from stuff that is true about yourself. I just don't know if it's bad enough to be an itis. I've got it under control. I think it's going to <laughs> Look, I'm handling it, okay? I can maintain. <laughs> I don't have to make another character. I just really want to, all right? I can stop whenever I want making a new character as he's talking. <laughs> well, I could. I just don't want to. Didn't get to see enough of our local wrestling federation this year. No. I did get Schedules to, to became... touch Carlito, but... Uh... Other than that. Schedules just became an issue because they hold shows when we would not, we're not able to go to shows. Yeah. Um, especially toward the end of the year. It's hard for me to get time off on a weekend. But I love them. Yeah. And if you live in the Ohio area and you want to be a professional wrestler or an entity within professional wrestling, you should go to their wrestling school. ASWA training rounds? I don't know. Go to the ASWA website. They've got a banner there. It's Pretty cool. American States Wrestling Alliance. Go. Go. Go! No, I'm kidding. Come back. Listen to the rest of the podcast. Give us a thumbs up. Um, yeah. I mean, like, in general, this was a pretty shitty year, marked by a lot of really good entertainment. Yeah. Like, this, uh, this was a year of a fucking fuck. Yeah. I think mean, the easiest way to explain it. A lot of trials and tribulations, both personal and public. And 
it has been marked by a couple really good movies, a couple really good games. Not much of my music. Um, no, not really. I read, I believe it came out this year. Yeah, summer. Uh, at least one really, really good book this year. Hey, yeah, what was the latest uh, Jim Butcher novel that came out? Uh, it was uh, obviously another issue of the Dresden Files. And it was called, um, no, the next one's called Peace Talks. Okay, because I saw somebody at work today who left with a Jim Butcher book. Uh, it was it was actually kind of fucking funny. It was some book I never heard of, a uh, Laurel K. Hamilton book, and a Jim Butcher book. And I was like, I so desperately want to be like, have you heard of Colt Regan? But they were old people who did not have any semblance of what we're, an internet we're was. clearly buying this for someone else. Oh, no, the dude was buying it to read himself. But he just, like, I, you can't get my book in physical brick-and-mortar stores. And they... They were not. <laughs> they were not the kind of people who internet. Otherwise, that guy would not have been bought. coming to Walmart to be like, it's book day. He would have been it's just had, already game. had it forever. Skin Game. I read Skin Game when it came out. Skin Game was really, really good and very interesting. But I can't talk about that because for any of you listener, uh, any of you listener, I like that phrase, Yeah. Um, who have read these novels, who know what the Dresden Files are, I believe you're at Blood Rites, uh, the one with the porno and the vampires. No, I finished that one. You I didn't? just haven't started the next one yet. I, I will choke you. Hey, I finished the last one because you said I couldn't do it. And you said you would beat Pokemon if I finished that one. Where's the word where is beating Pokemon, motherfucker? I beat the first one. Yeah? <laughs> that's, that's the one I said I would beat now, isn't it? No. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I'm doing the Z-Snap thing, but without snapping much. But, uh, yeah, he's at Blood Rites, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine books from the most recent entry in the series. I'm sorry, a lot of stupid stuff happened in the last book that I can tell they're going places with. Wan, wan, wan. Well, no, not wan, wan, wan. This book is, uh, kind of fucking making dumb decisions. I guess I'll read more of it. Yes, you will, because I will hound you until you do. It's a good series. I think Jim Butcher's a great writer, by the way. I'm just not liking some of the decisions he's making. That's all. They're just storytelling decisions. They're not for everybody. I mean, that's the beauty of them. I don't have to like it. He's still an incredible writer. Um, I want to look into his other thing. What is it? Codex Alora. Pokemon... Space Magic? Codex Alora. Uh, it's Roman legions crossed with Pokemon, yeah. Yeah, it's Someone cool. bet him he couldn't make a story out of it. Well, I hope he enjoys his monies. Uh, well, he was going to post the original story online for free, because there was a guy online who bet him. He's like, wait, I, was, I made it. Uh, I was going to post it, but then I realized I could sell this. So you'll just have to take me my word. The guy was like, ha, you couldn't do it. Now you're just lying. That means I win. And, the guy, and Jim Butcher was like, oh, sure, you get to win, whatever. <laughs> 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 That's funny. Uh, this is, uh, again, his story, but it's something we're talking about. He actually, the first Dresden Files novel was written, and you can look this up, uh, listener. He he wrote it in every way he considered wrong. His teacher at the time, in one of his college courses, had bet him if he had just made all these, as he put it, he was considered at the time all these terrible, formulaic, awful decisions that he hated, he would make a really good book because uh, that teacher felt like he was just missing some stuff and he would get that stuff if he made all these awful decisions. And the guy was like, fine. Uh, Jim Butcher was like, fine, I'll do it your way and it'll suck and I'll be right. And then he made the Dresden Files. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of predictability, especially in that first book. But but the teacher was right. He that's got something not a bad the thing. There's a conversation we have a lot. Tropes aren't bad. Tropes are not bad. That is... Such an important lesson. For you anyone. you can dislike a trope, and there are plenty of tropes I personally dislike. I don't know. Can you name a trope you think I personally dislike? Um. Ooh, I think I've got one. Cause I don't. Uh, there's not many. There's maybe like three. You took that joke from me, and I hate you for it. What? Uh, I I was gonna say like deadpan snarker, or well, what's the one that's like you to a T? I don't remember. Some some sort of bastard. I forget. <laughs> Smug uh, no. Snake? <laughs> no, no, no. The one before Smug Snake. Smug Snake is a step too far. Um, yeah, I was going to say that. It was going to be a good joke, but you just took the joke right from me. I'm sorry. 
sorry. <laughs> uh, but uh, the the only one that chops to mind is um, like romantic misunderstanding. Oh, you do hate that so I much. Fucking hate that trope so much, but it's not bad. Tropes are not inherently bad. That's actually a good piece of advice for anyone who's like us, who absorbs a lot of media and thinks on it, and is the kind of nerd who overthinks sh- who overthinks shit, fictional shit. Who yeah, who categorizes and into stuff. stuff and thinks about. One of the, it's great for creators too. You know, sometimes you just have to embrace the fact that what you're doing has been done before because everything's been done before. Uh, all of it. Yeah. By the Simpsons, probably. Yeah, likely. But tropes are not inherently evil. Nothing. Uh, nothing. Nothing that you can use to make a story is inherently evil. I guess in, unless you wrote the story in children's blood. That would probably be evil. Well, who are the children? Well, I mean... I mean, like, is, are they really evil children? Well, that presumes, like, a children of the corn scenario that... Those kids weren't, like, actually super evil. They were just being misled by an evil child. Like, if it was that kid's blood... <laughs> this has gone down an interesting rabbit hole. I feel, like, I, feel like this, I feel like that little rabbit hole gives the listeners an insight about you. <laughs> I think they got all the insight they needed in the Game of Thrones podcast. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, tropes aren't inherently bad. And, you know, if you, if you write something, you're like, that's schlocky. That's no reason to get rid of it. Maybe tune it so it's a little less and malicious, I believe is the word you used before, but uh also a trope. Yeah. They're probably renaming it because they're sucking all the soul out of that website. Uh I just well, you mean you know, you got a website built by nerds who like to codify things about codifying things, and if they find a way they think they can codify things better, well gosh, they're gonna do it. True. True enough. So yeah, YouTube is what I like to watch. I like to watch a lot of let's plays. I like to watch a lot of uh Especially Nuzlocke challenges, I love watching those. Um, Paul Swords Jr., I like watching his Minecraft stuff. Um, I this, there's so much bullshit I watch on YouTube that has no bearing on anything. It's just stuff I watch because I find it interesting. Yeah, um, but you know, this is the year interview, and this has been my year. Look, I can get personal and be like on a very special episode of the Two Nerds podcast, but I don't think I want that. <laughs> the listener might, but I don't think I want that. <laughs> Um, yeah, in terms of YouTube videos, I mostly watch, like, Mental Floss stuff, Mental Floss style stuff, uh, Game Rooms. I'm currently in the middle of their Sonic, uh, Boom playthrough. It's glorious. I've heard Don't Starve is also good. It has been a rambling, almost worthless conversation (laughs) about 2014 and what a year it has been. Uh, the boy in white have fought, uh... We're using snippy, snippy words under a veneer of kindness. And uh, we talked about authors and movies. We said the word um a lot. Um, so there's that. Uh, I believe we have attracted Jeff Goldblum. Um, <laughs> I think he was the mystery car. Yeah, I think he was. <laughs> hey, gentlemen. Uh, if I could uh, just come in for just a moment there. I, uh, excellent. <laughs> that would have been pretty cool. I would have had Jeff Goldblum be a guest on the yeah, podcast. Been an excellent guest on the podcast. That would have been super awkward as I'm like, sir, this is a, a shirtless podcast for reasons I cannot go into. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, happy you to just watch. <laughs> stare at me until I take my shirt off. <laughs> like, don't you ruin this for me. <laughs> oh. I saw something on Tumblr the other day that was like, picture of Jeff Goldblum, and it was like, he's got this, uh, what was it, the uh, older dad who's still totally cool and would rock your world aesthetic, and I was like, so the Jeff Goldblum aesthetic? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's an amazing individual. I'm looking forward to Jurassic Park 9, because I believe he's supposed to be in it, right? Sure. I don't know. I don't, I'm going to feel really bad if he's not. Well, he wasn't in, like, one of the other ones, so... And it was... Eh, it was okay. Yeah, it wasn't the worst one. No. He was in the worst one. <laughs> Which one was that one? The Lost World. That... The first... Uh, the... Mm, don't... Do not step to the Lost World, so... I that guess... That's an awful movie. The last part of that movie sucks. You know why 
I always forget that that movie is bad is because after they escape from all the raptors, the movie is over. <laughs> no. You know, it goes on to make mistakes. <laughs> <coughs> oh. Fantastic. Um, that, this was a fun little diversion. Yeah. Well, part. no, but like Jurassic Park 4 or whatever, the new Lost World or something, um, that's that's the one that's... Uh, they're going like they're going the the Arkham games route where it's just Jurassic World now. Yeah. Yeah. And and isn't it with um, Star Lord and he's made friends yeah, with a bunch of it. Velociraptors. Star Lord and um, I highly doubt he's made friends with a bunch of Velociraptors. I'm pretty sure it's not a like a new Snow Dogs reboot where it's him and his team of Velociraptor uh, like hounds who pull his. Who pulled his cart across the Iditarod? I don't think so. So do you think, like, the trailer, from what I understand, because we don't watch trailers, um, because we're that lame, uh, is, is it like Snow Dogs in that, like, it's advertised as being this goofy, wacky movie with talking dogs, and it's actually a very serious... <laughs> very serious character study on, on Cuba Gooding Jr.? <laughs> <laughs> because if the internet is anything to believe, it's it's just like... Star Lord and his Velociraptor party pack go event adventuring. <laughs> Look, if that is the movie, <laughs> I'm calling it now. Movie 2015. <laughs> but I highly doubt that it is. Oh, man. Like, you see uh, Velociraptor with Awesome Mix Volume 1 and the <laughs> on his head, and he's just like bopping around. Come and get your love. Yeah. I, no, I'd watch it. It's got my $10. Damn right, I'd watch that. I'd fucking watch that and make gifts on it on Tumblr. Um, shit. What else can we tell you, listener? We talked about a lot of indie games. What Buy indie mean? games, man. Steam sales have been crazy. I was, I was, I was ready for bed. Like, I'd gotten out of the shower and I was like, it is time for bed. And I pulled up my phone and I had an email and it was like, some Shovel Knight's on sale. And I was like, I am ready to go downstairs and buy Shovel Knight. <laughs> man, fuck time to buy Shovel Knight. <sighs> I sat around clicking on shit for half an hour. Shit that didn't matter. Refreshing Twitter when nobody was awake. I think we've all been there. I, I think we have. And I think today... I think uh, today this is this podcast has been, spiritually speaking, verbally refreshing Twitter when nobody's online. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, I remember I actually wanted to tell the listeners something. Every year, listener, on New Year's, you can join us in spirit. We started a tradition last year. We're going to continue it this year because what's a tradition without continuation? Non-existent. Um, I pulled an anime out of the aether because I thought it looked interesting, and the boy and I watched it. And because it ended on a New Year's section, we decided that every year on New Year's we should watch it. And uh, you should partake in this as well, A, because it's an amazing piece of anime. Uh, and be it's so happy. It's it is like so happy. The most wonderful experience. Like, it gives you hope going forward into the next year. And I think we could all use a little hope right now. The movie version of Saint Young Men. Now, you can watch the rest of the little series if you want to. It's good. But specifically the movie, we like to watch it. We'll be watching it after the ball drops when Boy gets off of work. Cue up that Saint Young Man and enjoy us some uh, best friends, Buddha and Jesus. And I know that sounds super blasphemous, but it, I swear, it's, like, super nice. I swear, it's, like, super respectful. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice and sweet. And and there is humor, but it's it's really light, sort of tongue-in-cheeky kind of stuff. But it's fantastic. So if you want to join us in spirit, listener, and, hey, if we eventually get enough listeners, let's make that a goal for 20, 2015 around this time. If we have enough of you motherfuckers out there, uh, you can all get it at Ultimo Dragon's house, and we will stream that shit. And you can join us on a stream. We can all watch Saint Young Men together. And if whatever for whatever reason we can't end up streaming it, what what we'll do is we'll do what I've heard other podcasts do. We'll watch it and we will podcast through it. We'll talk about it as it's playing. That sounds fantastic. But I'd rather stream it anyway. Well, um, I don't know. I mean, there's probably somebody out there that would rather us talk about it. Because everything's better when nerds talk about it. Fuck it, let's get hardcore.